Next, we have Ms. Sira Rogers. Sira is currently in her first semester as a graduate student in the Masters of Architecture program with a specialization in historic preservation at the University of Buffalo. She just graduated from the interior design program at Villa Maria College and received a certificate in historic restoration and preservation. Along with going to school full time, she is an assistant to the restoration consultant at Shea's Performing Arts Center. Hi everybody, I'm Sira. Um, I'm currently um, a historic preservation student at UB and this semester for our studio project we're using the Richardson Complex as our site. In 1871, Henry Hobson Richardson was chosen to be the architect for the new Buffalo State Insane Asylum. His design was based on the new and innovative Kirkbride plan. About a year later, Frederick Law Olmsted was chosen to design the grounds and he wanted them to be park-like, therapeutic, and picturesque. Incorporated into the landscape was a large amount of farmland because at the time, um, being out in nature and working the land was seen as a form of therapy for patients who are mentally ill. Because Frederick Law Olmsted also designed Delaware Park and um, Forest Lawn Cemetery, the three parks were all connected to um, <laughs> Around 1945, farmland was turned into the campus of Buffalo State College. Rockwell Road was built and it then split the grounds in half. So everything to the north of Rockwell Road became the grounds for the Buffalo State College and then everything to the south there stayed as the mental hospital. After World War II, deinstitutionalization grew popular at this time, people were moved out of asylums and um, into more short-term facilities, and many of the buildings on the site were torn down, and new buildings were built in their place, mostly on the right-hand side of the campus. Those new buildings are now home to the current Buffalo Psychiatric Center. And today, the campus looks very different from what it originally had. Um, the buildings that are left of what were built during the complex's period of significance are now National Historic Landmarks, as are the grounds that surround them. Um, the campus now occupies only 42 acres of the original 203. Work has been completed in the last couple years on the Hotel Henry, which inhabits the original administration building and the first male and female wards on either side of it. Along with 88 hotel rooms, it offers a small restaurant, conference and meeting spaces, as well as event venues. On the ground floor, there is a small museum to showcase the vast history of the complex. The Hotel Henry was re Habilitated using historic tax credits, which meant they had to follow the Secretary of the Interior's guidelines. So here you can see um, an original shot and then where they were allowed to protrude into the hallways with wardrobes in order to add more space inside of the hotel rooms. This was originally attic space above one of the patient wards, where now it houses the suites for the hotel. Um, you can see the exposed structural elements and the original baseboards that are both character-defining features of the space. And in this next picture, I want you guys to pay attention to the metal enclosed porch because I'll be talking about it in the next slide. Anytime we walk around inside or outside of a building, we're always hunting for important clues or elements that hint to the past or the original use of the building. These clues or elements can help support our design proposals and they're important to note in historic buildings and sites. So the porch in the last photograph isn't original to the Kirkbride plan buildings. We found this out only by being on site and taking a look at things. Um, in this picture, you can see the ghosting on the bricks underneath those new porches that shows us where the original porch um, once stood. So this supports the idea of possibly proposing a glazed curtain wall that could create additional indoor space. This is a picture taken from the barn looking towards the um, complex. And view sheds are important because they can help determine if new buildings can be built on the historic site or not. Um, here at this project, new buildings would be an obstacle because it would block the view from the barn to the main buildings and vice versa. When we don't know what spaces were used for, we often look for details and features that may be clues. Here, um, you can take a look at the baseboards. The one on the left-hand side is very minimal. There's not much detail, and the one on the right-hand side has a lot of detail. So from this, we were able to figure out that the space on the right-hand side was more important because they spent more time to detail 
the baseboards. When trying to figure out when, where original doors were, we can take a look at um, the differences in the exterior brick or the interior plaster to look and see where those differences are to show us where the doors may have been. And remnants of sidewalks and pathways can help to show us where the original Olmsted design ones possibly may have been. So here are the two buildings that our studio class is taking a specific look at. To the left there is the barn, and the right is building 41, which was the dining hall. Um, these buildings are our going, going to be our proposed design that has to tie in both with the Hotel Henry and then what McGuire Development is proposing for buildings 38, 39, and 40. And then along with those two buildings, we're taking a look at the grounds and how they are or aren't being used. Um, we're looking to better link the grounds with the surrounding communities and bring back that park-like setting that Olmsted had originally designed it to be. <clears throat> so the next buildings are the ones that we took a look at that are proposed to be university-based retirement housing by McGuire Development. These buildings are 38, 39, and 40. Um, so we're taking a look at their proposal, and we're analyzing it and creating our own proposal for the grounds, and then building 41 and the barn. Um, the tricky part is to have to tie it in with the retirement housing and the hotel. So I've already learned a lot on our five-plus site visits. Um, the complex has such a rich history and a great architecture um, that should definitely be preserved and shared with our future generations. And I'm really excited to see what the future has in store for this amazing building. Thank you.